one of the finals of the, I'm, I'm still calling it the Dead Infested Cup. It's officially Infested Cup. I call it Dead Infested Cup. This is Infested Blindside. What a name for an infested map. There's only the single capsule command center here to the right. Otherwise, it is the map Blindside, which if you are unfamiliar with, has an immense amount of back lanes to run across, uh, all sorts of little pockets to go. So point being, there's a lot of ways to get towards your opponent's base, although there's just this gap here and this little ramp here for uh, defensive posturing. <clears throat> anyway, and surprise, surprise, we are seeing a Nagnar uh, and Sponge once again in the finals. So through the loser's bracket, we end up with a rematch. Uh, so yeah, whoever wins this is the official champion. And it is a, I don't remember if it was a best of five or best of, we'll know when, I'll know as the things progress. Part of the problem was, is I wasn't given an immense amount of details of the running of this tournament or what the official, um, how, how it was all balanced. Sponge actually switching things up and rather than going Zerg here, he's going to opt for Terran. Interesting. Uh, he's got this command center. Actually, do the overlords still, yeah, they still give supply overall. Huh. Fun. Anyway, I actually like Terran in these open maps like this, mostly because if you can get enough Marines down, it feels like that is an advantage. Because at a certain point, with the amount of Marines you are able to field, it is a enough to knock down infested Terrans before they're able to get on top of your opponents. And either way, as far, you can spread Marines out. You can kind of do the splitting more effectively than you can do with the Sunken Colonies, uh, comparatively. So I feel like in open maps like this, where, yeah... I just feel like it's a bit of an advantage. Looks like they are. we are seeing a front door seal here from Sponge, already a front door seal from Nagnar. He's already getting two infested Terrans fielded. And actually going to be way ahead in that regard. And so what might end up happening, depending on the timing of, the, of these infested Terrans, I don't know how long they take uh, to get across the map, we might see infested command centers getting exploded and need to be lifted off to maintain a potential infested Terran advantage. In fact, what I would do if I was Nagnar and patient enough and could use my micro well enough is I would try to time when the counter infested Terran, they're actually going to spawn on the opposite side of the map or on, on the opposite side of the command center, I believe. I think they spawn uh, here. We'll see. Point being, I think they need to be lifted off. Maybe not because this might be a small, a small unit, but what I would move here across and then blow up on the spawning infested Terrans while blowing up on the infested command, uh, command centers. That would be like the ultimate hat trick. Uh, but right now, Nagnar holding position. Oh, is he going to blow? So it's just going to be counter to counter. No opportunity, but that's going to open up a counter shot. Nagnar actually just fielding the Infested Terrans on front. Going to go ahead and allow Sponge to expend his Infested Terrans in position uh, comparatively. We do see a barracks building. Now, here's the thing. I feel like the time, the timing of all this is in Sponge's favor. The longer he can delay, the more of an advantage it will be. Another counter hit, counter hit. Um... Yeah, the more time he can buy to get Marines out, because if he can get sufficient Marines out, then he is opened up in a situation where Nagnar is not going to be in a defensive situation where he can deal, where he can basically, basically it's like you have defense, so you can go ahead and, and push out with the offense. And on top of that, oh, going factory as well, and getting the Vultures as well. Keep in mind, Vultures do an immense amount of damage to small unit types, which I believe Infested Terrans are. So they do full damage, which means they can pick them apart rather rapidly. So... A couple of vultures out in the field, and Sponge will more or less have free reign to go ahead and rain Terran destruction. You can even lift off the command centers and just camp the vultures here uh, and push off from there. In the mean, uh, opting this time to explode on top of that, that command center. We do see a hatchery being grabbed at that natural expansion. I'm not sure what... The, I mean, not a standard build. This is like a 15 hatch, something like that. Nothing's typical in these matchups. Spawning pool being built, but it's going to be a ways before... Nagnar, because Nagnar dedicated so much early gas to the Infested Terrans, and because that doesn't like give you higher tier tech, even if we see a Starport and a Wraith after this, Machine Shop? Why are we going Machine Shop? Just to get speed for the Vultures? Please not a tank. I feel like Vultures are the way to go here. Uh, Nagnar backing off with this Infested Terran that looks like he's going to... Oh! Misses the explosion right there. Is he going to swing around? Hits it that time still doing continuous production he also managed to sneak another infested terran along here i'd like to see him hit these infested command centers uh, while he can but uh it's potentially what we're going to see from sponge is the ultimate defense which is going siege tanks and a handful of marines yeah he's going to go tank first i wish it was vultures actually uh because i feel vultures are cheaper faster you could also get the wraith behind it i don't know uh what's best honestly as far as the meta uh it looks like he let this infested terran in on that gap this marine Going to try to hold position, but that's going to be one SCV and one Marine down. Supply lead currently in Magnar's favor. He is 
making his way towards Lair. He's also saturated that natural expansion fairly well. I'm actually interested. Yeah, I don't know that there's people are in, in Moltrap and chat specifically saying the meta as far as Infested Giant Gets go. But I feel like there is a meta that will eventually emerge as far as this goes. Double Creep Colonies being planned to keep in mind three Creep, three creep Colonies, uh, or sorry, three something Colonies on the front. And that does knock down Infested Terran before it is able to land a shot. Siege Tank here otherwise, but this might give a lead with the Spire to Magnar again. Because if he can get Mutalisks out, this we got Double Factory. I We do have a Goliath, so where did the Armory get planted? So Armory Weapons 1 being built to potentially deal with the Mutalisks. But 2 Hatch Mutalisk, uh, you can build rather rapidly. And with that third something Colony down, and actually with the Blockade, it should be sufficient. Uh, Mutalisks Infested Terrans running towards the front. That should be plenty to wipe out Goliaths out on the ground, although, I don't know, we'll see how this ends up working out. Um, Spire about halfway finished. We'll see how many Goliaths can get fielded by Sponge in the interim to deal with this. He still hasn't grabbed either his natural expansion or really any other base on the field, so um, I don't know. We'll have to see how this works out. Magnar with a big worker lead thus far, and he has got double gas uh, to work with as well. I feel like he's got a little bit more defense on his front door, because this is a siege tank without siege check. Charon boosters being upgraded. Was this a map hack? Because he didn't scan any of that. Maybe he just assumed that Mutalisks, he knew that Mutalisks were going to come. Third hatchery being planted. So we're going to old school infested cup strategies. So we're going to go three hatch in base uh, with the Spire. Nagnar has a ton of gas and a bunch of larva to go ahead and get an initial six Mutalisks. And I do believe that six Mutalisks uh, well, as soon as he has eight Mutalisks, honestly, I think he can overwhelm this amount of Goliaths. Weapon, even, and Weapons 1 is just a ways away. He's going level 1 weapons on the Spire as well uh, to really kick that point home. And we have another Infested Terran making its way towards the front, but with, yeah, with the handful of Infested Terrans on the front, as long as they back off and don't take the shots from the Siege Tank and this Marine, the, this isn't going to last very long. The Goliaths are going to move up there. And they can start working on that infested command. I don't know. We'll see how this uh, plays out. We do have a uh, command center being plopped down behind this. Kind of clever. I like casting this because it's like the meta is completely random and fresh again. Overlords making their way across. Now, keep in mind, these overlords are also exposed, and they can get wiped out as well. This infested turret making its way back towards home base. A big grouping of Goliaths. So this is turning into a pseudo 80s mullet build where it's just going to be a glut of Goliaths pouring forward. Goliaths can wipe out infested Terrans. Looks like level one weapons is going to finish before these Mutalisks uh, make it in position. This almost feels like a map hack situation because the Goliaths are reacting to the location of the Mutalisks, honestly, before they're spotted. I don't. I would assume that's not the case because this is infested cup and it's a little bit silly. But it, maybe I just missed an Overlord uh, scouting it in between. Nice micro, though from Nagnar, just running through and able to take out uh, two SCVs pretty easily. Missile turret does manage to spawn, but not what amazing micromanagement with these Mutalists from Nagnar. Looks like that turret's going to stand. Nice rebuild there by Sponge. And Nagnar now trying to exit. He's still got eight Mutalisks, but they've taken a lot of damage. And so they're going to back off. Another expansion being grabbed from Nagnar to the upper left-hand corner. But am I tripping? I don't... Am I tripping? Uh, maybe it was there was an Overlord killed in that corner and I just missed it and that's why the Goliaths were able to move the location. But now the Goliaths starting to press out. If the, now here's the thing. If these Mutalisks engage right with the Infested Terran, that Infested Terran can explode on top of the Goliaths and wipe a lot of them out because I'm assuming that Mutalisks are going to be the primary target. However, aside from that, these are several... Oh, they're getting split. That's not good news. But this is a lot of Goliaths they can wipe out Infested Terrans as they're approaching, and eight Goliaths versus eight Mutalisks is not a winning situation. This Overlord getting taken out. This Infested Command Center might get wiped out as well. That Infested Terran getting knocked out before it was able to land. So this is going to be the moment of truth. Does it manage to hit? Does not look like it would manage to explode on the front. So this is, yeah, you got to lead with those Mutalisks and move with the Infested Terran behind it. This Infested Terran going to get wiped out before it's able to land, and this might be too many Goliaths as they're pressing in on the front. This is a lot of Mutalists that are being produced behind this, but they're eating, yeah, they're just taking piecemeal damage. So Magnar, despite having a brutally strong economy, he's on the verge of potentially having his front door broken. He is continuing how many Mutalists of this. This is 12 Mutalists, a full control group, plus one technically, because usually with the Overlord, 
uh, it's plenty. But the Goliaths waiting alongside, they're engaging that might have been a suicide mission, but they're going to go ahead and hold up short. Let's see if the Goliaths find another location. Ooh, eating some free damage and actually one of the Goliaths being uh, wiped out. And this is turning into more of a standard, not exactly standard. This is turning into a TVP. More Goliaths, I assume, are going to walk up with these additional infested Terran. And if they wipe out these sunken colonies on the front, the Goliaths in sufficient numbers, particularly plus one weapons, can just clean up everything underneath. Uh, we do have a starport down as well. I'm not seeing any science facility, though. Natural expansion's up and running. 41, big drone lead. Again, this is a situation, though, with Nagnar can just delay things out. Um, he'll be in a strong situation. He's getting hydro speed. It looks like he's continuing to produce mutalisks. He's got level one missile weapons. Looks like the Goliaths being engaged upon. Oh, this is unfortunate because he didn't reinforce or back off with those Goliaths. These are just going to get completely wiped out by that mutalisk force. And again, yeah, it looks like the Goliath's going to move to the corner to potentially. So I, I assume that's what was happening there. And is this sufficient Goliath? So we got eight Goliaths on the ground. Sorry, nine Goliaths. This right? Nine Goliaths on the ground, but this is a huge amount of mutalisks that are moving in. And two infested command centers that are going to try to land behind it, I believe. And yeah, let's see if this is going to be sufficient to defend with reinforcements. Was level two weapons along the way? Let's let's check. No, nope, level two weapons, level one armor is a ways off. A Valkyrie being produced in the air. It's not long for life, however, and there's no science facility, so I'm not sure if there's going to be a lot of mercy, but if Nagnar just donates, if splits half the mutalisks off and donates the rest of the mutalisks, that will be sufficient uh, to basically keep a lot of this alive. A bunch of infested terrans being built on the front. Still have the siege tank alongside. We still have a, looks like a full, looks like we're getting towards a full control group of Goliaths. Now the question is, is can Sponge get out of his base long enough to go ahead and uh, do the damage? We see ventral sacks being upgraded, which is going to be the slow drop from the... Uh, overlords that would be hilarious and there's plenty of goliaths to provide that defense that's the nice thing about goliaths is not only can they shoot down um infested terrans fairly rapidly but you know good anti-air deal with a lot of the things that zerg puts out there however nagnar continuing to expand going the sauron zerg style <laughs> taking that three o'clock base not exactly but taking that third base such and transferring a lot of his drones there this overlord's still in position it looks like that's going to go get going ahead and getting wiped out this overlord going to sacrifice itself to get a spot. Should see this infested Terrans along this corner and a bunch of turrets in the way. A Valkyrie out again. Sorry for bump, bumping my mic right there. The mic bump. I actually uh, put something on my Christmas wish list to try to fix that. One of those like boom mics that kind of has the reach rather than the one that's just sticking in front of my face on a pedestal. Um, but anyway, Sponge starting to move out. There aren't mulesks to engage this and, and push this back. And actually, maybe there's enough turrets and with the reinforcements that can deal with it. So one Goliath picked off right there. The Valkyrie moving up along with... And actually, this might get just taken care of right this second. Yeah, the Valkyrie gets wiped out, but these Mutalists are looking real soft. Real soft. N amongst the survivors, several of them eating a huge amount of damage. So they're fleeing. And this is, I think, going to give sufficient opportunity for Sponge to go ahead and march forward with his Infested Terrans, his Goliaths, and potentially deliver a killing blow on the front. Level one armor, so I guess this you could call this, what is this? So we're seeing a new build, which is the 15 minute approximately timing attack on one level one armor is level one, uh, not exactly, but yeah. However, one advantage for Nagnar is even if his front gets attacked, he's got a lot of bases uh, out in the field and you can kind of play it uh, a little bit more like refugee style. Mutalus diving forward. It looks like Hydralis is engaging these Goliaths in between. The Infested Terrans a little bit delayed with that siege tank. Those Hydralisks currently melting. The Mutalisks looking, I think, to pick off the Infested Terrans behind this, but not able to find them. The Infested Terrans now leading, attacking the Goliaths. So one apiece is going to be able to wipe that out rather rapidly. A third one along the way. The Hydralis trying to focus on the Infested Terrans. Instead, ends up losing a lot of them. The Mutalisks engaging from behind, and it doesn't look like there's enough Goliaths left for Sponge to break through. So it ends up losing all of his attack forces, and there's still Mutalisks to spare for Nagnar. He has a big supply lead, a big economic lead. And now the question is, is does this turn into a starvation match uh, for Nagnar? So he's got five factories kind of in an odd configuration in the back of his base, continuing to just pump Goliaths. 
Uh, is he continuing to pump infested Terrans? No in additional infested Terrans. Moving out to greet these Mutalisks as they're pressing forward. I think he's not effectively all in, but potentially all in at this stage. However, Hydralisks moving to go ahead and engage. They have level one weapons. Nagnar, if he can get a cohesive attack grouping, he should be able to, and unfortunately right now, running into the high ground problem. Yeah, now getting up on that high ground. And Infested Terran also going to be able to group up, pick off the rest of those Goliaths. And now Hydralisks starting to move in. We are seeing a big army press into this. No siege tanks. Now Vultures. Now Vultures, really? Now we're seeing the Vultures. Uh, the Goliaths getting wiped out. This Infested Command Center is not long for life. Why the Vultures now? I would have loved to see that earlier. Whatever. Um... <laughs> Maybe an infested uh, Terran here could deal with these Hydralisks. Let's see if... Uh, I think they're going to get wiped out. There's a huge march of Hydralisks now just making their way from every direction, all of the bases. And vultures are being produced to try to contend. Really, we need siege tanks, but siege tank is not there. A siege tank being built right there. SAV's coming off the line to try to defend this. But more Hydralisks and more... This is... This is looking like, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of uh, Game of Thrones, where it's like that moment where just everything's getting overwhelmed and it's like, yeah, we beat the first front. It was like, well, yeah, that was the, the first the first front. It's just coming and coming and coming. More of the, uh, I guess, White Walkers and that. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> chat throwing out, hold the door. That's going to be the Hodor. That's going to be the uh, siege tank right here. We're naming Hodor to try to hold the door uh, against this infested Terran. There's GG from Sponge. So game one going to Nagnar. We'll move on to game two momentarily. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.